Hello, Jennifer Reinman here from Otterly Captivating Art. For those of you who are just getting to know us, um, again, I'm, I am Jennifer. My husband, Michael, is the artist who makes all the great art that you love that, on our products. I am the writer and um, I'm the one who puts his art on the products. And then we um, are doing the books. And so I'm gonna start with my announcement, which is that we have a new book in our lineup. It's called a Cornucopia of Words, Poetry for Thanksgiving. This is an anthology of poems by uh, diverse artists, black, white, Indian, indigenous, men and women, all lots of different voices, um, all classical poets that are long gone, except for a few by me. Um, so it's a great gift if you are going to Thanksgiving at somebody else's house and you wanna bring a hostess gift, gift but you don't know what to bring poetry book um or if you love poetry and you you want something to inspire you for the season here you go uh this is in the same lineup as our uh first one of the series which is a concerto of words uh poetry for musicians which again is a bunch of long gone poets writing about music and a couple by me. So um, today I wanted to talk specifically about Paul Lawrence Dunbar. He was an influential black American poet. He was born to formerly enslaved parents. Uh, he lived in the um, late 19th, early 20th century. Uh, he was one of the first really influential black poets. He wrote in, the interesting thing about him is that he wrote in dialect often the African-American dialect. And so he, I'm not going to read any of that today because I haven't studied it enough to really do it right and I don't want to be disrespectful, but he wrote in the way that they actually spoke. And so his writings in that dialect are a great um, representation of the way they spoke at that time and some still do. Um, that's of course only a portion of the work that he did. He wrote many, many pieces in standard American English, um, poems. He has collections of poetry, novels, short stories, essays. He wrote a lot. Um, he started out by uh, writing poetry when he was six. His first public recitation of his poetry was when he was nine. So he was very clearly from an early age, um, literally, inclined. He showed a lot of promise in high school. He was the only black student in his high school or in his class anyway. Um, and he was quite active in the literary scene of his high school. Um, an interesting fact, he was friends with the Wright brothers, the ones who uh, sort of invented flight. So um, they ran a newspaper that published his work uh, and he got published in several other works as well. Um, he, unfortunately he wanted to study law, but his family could not afford to send him to college and he tried to get many different kinds of jobs and could not because of his race. Uh, remember that this was late 19th century and, uh, racism was far worse than it is now, although it's still pretty bad. Uh, so he ended up getting this brilliant man ended up getting a job as an elevator operator, which might be good for us because he, he actually gave him a lot of free time. And so he would write, I guess, while he was waiting for people to come ride his elevator. So he actually wrote a lot of work while he was doing that job. And then luckily for him, he was discovered by um, some rich and powerful men who kind of helped him along his literary career, um, gave him funding, wrote commendatory letters, helped him get published. And so he ended up publishing lots and lots of work, which is great for us. So we have all of that legacy of his. So I'm going to read two of his pieces, one from each of my books. Um, I'll do the first one from A Cornucopia of Words, Poetry for Thanksgiving. Um, and I will post links to these books uh, in the comments when I'm done. Uh, I won't bore you with that now. Okay, so I'm going to read first from this one. This piece is called Merry Autumn. It's all a farce, these tales they tell, 
about the breezes sighing and moans astir or a field and dell, because the year is dying. Such principles are most absurd. I care not who first taught them. There's nothing known to beast or bird to make a solemn autumn. In solemn times when grief holds sway with countenance distressing, you'll note the moat of black and gray will then be used in dressing. New purple tints are all around. The sky is blue and mellow, and e'en the gla grasses turn the ground from modest green to yellow. The sea buds all with l laughter crack on featherweed and gymsum. The leaves that should be dressed in black are all decked out in crimson. A butterfly goes winging by, a singing bird comes after, and nature, all from earth to sky, is bubbling o'er with laughter. The ripples wimple on the rills like sparkling little lasses. The sunlight runs along the hills and laughs among the grasses. The earth is just so full of fun it really can't contain it, and streams of mirth so freely run the heavens seem to rain it. Don't talk to me of solemn days and autumn's time of splendor, because the sun shows fewer rays and those grow slant and slender. Why, it's the climax of the year, the highest time of living, till naturally its bursting cheer just melts into Thanksgiving. So that is Merry Autumn by Paul Lawrence Dunbar. You can find it in my Cornucopia of Words Poetry for Thanksgiving book. I will post the link later. Uh, okay, so one more. This one's shorter uh, from a Concerto of Words, Poetry of You Musicians. Um, this one is called The Master Player. An old worn harp that had been played till all its strings were loose and frayed. Joy hate and fear each one essayed to play but each in turn had found no sweet responsiveness of sound then love the master player came with heavy breast and eyes aflame the harp he took all undismayed smote on its strings still strange to song and brought forth music sweet and strong that is The Master Player by Paul Lawrence Dunbar. So I would encourage you to seek out and read more of his work. Um, and I do know one more little fact is that at least some of his work was set to music. Um, there's a piece that I sing actually set to music by um, a black American composer named Florence Price. Uh, I'm not set up to perform that for you today, so I'm not going to, but if there's any interest uh, in hearing that, let me know and I will do a recording and post it for you because um, there's not a lot of recordings out there. So that is all I have to share with you today. Please check out my books, uh, Cornucopia of Words, Poetry for Thanksgiving, and A Concerto of Words, Poetry for Musicians. They make great gifts when you don't know what to get somebody. Um, they're very thoughtful, uh, great little gifts. So that's it. I hope you all are having a great week and I will see you soon.